Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Randy. So today we are finishing up season two of An Idiot Abroad. This episode is titled Carl Comes Home. I'm excited. I did watch season one so I remember the, I mean to some degree, I remember the end of season one when Carl comes home. Anyway, without further ado, here we go. See the glaciers before they melt. Though oh, I just realized Africa I didn't have <laughs> all that thought. I don't have it on headphones. Now I do. And Safari. Encounter the world's largest mammal. The ultimate things to do before you die. Or are they? I traveled right across the other side of the world. It wasn't what I pictured. Sure, we got the right house. I stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. Mm. It's horrible. I was proper struggling. I was losing yes. weight and I was starving. That's rank. No. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. I like the hippo in the house. That was the best <laughs> of everything. <laughs> there you go. I haven't quite got over it and my heart's pounding still because it doesn't know what's gone on. <laughs> and that's what you're like with this trip. <laughs> Nearly done me in. <laughs> that part was so funny. Hello, and welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad 2. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the star of the show, the little round headed twonk, that is, Carl Pilkington. What did Hi. you just call him? Well, Carl's been around the world again. Um, thank you for your questions. We're going to get to those. Uh, but first, I want to ask, why did you do it again? You swore you'd never do it again. You swore on camera. It's a job, isn't it? Just got to earn a living. I'm in a program called Idiot Abroad. Job offers aren't, you know, whizzing in. <laughs> no. Uh, no. No. Oh. Oh, that is massive. You, oh, I forgot uh, about that chose episode. chose the opportunity to be on a desert island, private island. Um, how did you find that experience? But you, you saw it. It wasn't a great experience. It looked beautiful to me. Fucking freezing. I do think that would be really it's cool. It's just a bad start. It's like moving on a rainy day, this. I thought it was going to be sand. It's all bloody rock. I travelled right across the other side of the world. It's pissing it down. Mm. It wasn't what I pictured. That's what I'm saying. Mm. When you have a dream, your head puts everything as you'd want it to be. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure Ricky would be happy about this, Carl. I don't give a shit. There's no way he'd be putting up with this. Pop it over, over your head. Keep warm. To be fair, stuck on a little island, dressed in leaves, with it lashing it down, and you having to build a shelter, like a chimp in a tree with gaffer tape, wasn't my idea of heaven either, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, yeah. In my head, I was picturing... A bounty advert. A bounty advert. That's what I was picturing. White sand, blue sea, couple of palm trees. Half yeah. a coconut with a bounty. Bounty in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point of that is, bounty on is the bounty advert, it's 30 seconds. She's loving that bounty. Mm -hmm. I bet she was pissed off after she'd eaten it. <laughs> and that's, that's the reality of it. Yeah. You don't look at the bigger picture, you go, that looks nice, and then you move on. One thing I've always wanted to do, and I hope I will get a chance to do it, which you did, the swimming with sharks. It looks amazing. That's all right, yeah. Good. OK. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Brilliant. <laughs> you brought that to life. <laughs> yeah! You can ask me how to paint a picture. <laughs> it's hard, though. Other people will always have their experience of it, and yeah. it's what they thought of it. Yeah. This is mental, this. I can see him. Look at him. But, but tell us your experience, how you felt. Right, I felt sick. <laughs> 
I'm not very good on boats. I thought I was going out for a night to see a dolphin. Mm. It turns out it was two nights on a boat to see sharks. Yeah. Well, I'm not great on boats. I was in a room that stunk of prawns. I thought everybody's room smelled like that until someone came in and said, Jesus, <laughs> what's going on in here? <laughs> see, the thing is, people are only thinking these things are good because they've seen it on the telly. Mm. They don't see all the work that goes into it, all the, the hassle, 10 hour the track. Work. Yeah. That's what makes it so good, though, is the reward. No. Or the work. No, I didn't. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> sat there, these nature programs that are getting a gorilla sat in the thing with its family and they put nice music on it. <laughs> All the sounds and stuff. <laughs> Gorillas traipsing through with the family. Oh, look, it looks amazing. Body it's in bright, sort of bright, you know, HD. Oh, that's amazing. I'd love to be there. <laughs> like ET. And in reality, my toes were bleeding, I had headache, I was being bit by mosquitoes, and I got there, and the first thing I saw was the mum gorilla sticking its finger up its kid's arse. Now, you don't see that as, a, as an, something that you go, wow. Yeah, I think they will. I think people will watch this and go, wow. This one has been one of the wonderful tracks. Wonderful? Yeah. Okay. I may say 10 out of 10. He said part of the gorilla trek was it's all about the hunt and finding it and looking at them. No, it isn't. Bring it to yeah. the hut. Bring it to the tent. Sit it outside. I'll look at it for a bit. Shift it. <laughs> <laughs> That's seeing a gorilla. Carl, we're often accused of bullying you. This is a, a recurring thing, isn't it, that we bully you. But both of us, and, Carl, and Ricky in particular, is always concerned about your well-being, um, particularly in Alaska, if you recall. You are not going to be eaten by a polar bear. When you had your medical, I found out that you didn't let them test your prostate, did you? No. No, but that's, that's... Why not? In the UK alone, more people die every year from prostate cancer than being savaged by a polar bear. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird time to bring it <laughs> no, up, but in the middle of nowhere. In the UK. It's one of the biggest killers, polar right? Bears. And that's just a simple test. So a doctor pops his finger up your anus and he goes, yep, you're all clear. And that's you relax for another year. Uh, I, I don't understand why you're suddenly caring about this now. I've got little battery left on this phone. I'm wearing the battery out. If right. something happens, I'm dead. Right. He's my best mate. Sue me. I'm worried about him. Yeah, yeah. No, but why isn't there ever anything about how's your blood pressure? Or yeah. how are your feet? You, you're in the cold. Are you warm enough? Are you, no, because it was none of that. It was, yes, I know. why don't you get a finger up your arse? Because often there are no <laughs> symptoms. Well, I don't want it done. I know you don't, but it's good for you. So, um, can we... Bring the doctor out, please. Oh. This is one of the first things I had watched with Carl was Carl Pilkington gets a prostate exam. So I've seen, I think, what it's about to show. Yes. I don't want to re-watch that, so I'm going to put it past it. And I'll link that below. And again, that was when I first... I'll put it towards the end. Um... But that was, like, one of my first things that I had, my first exposure to Carl, I think, was that. It was either my first or second time seeing Carl was him getting that prostate exam. And I don't really want to rewatch it because I've seen it already. Oh, he's getting it. Okay. We'll put it right here. And then I will link it below this video, my, my reaction to him getting the prostate exam. Who represent the men who will never have it done, some of which will die of prostate cancer. Genuinely. I haven't quite got over it, and my heart's pounding still because it doesn't know what's gone on. My body's gone, what just happened then? No one's ever been that high up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a human magnet. And then they're magnet. Ma magnet. Ma magnet. So tacky. Look, they're not even, they're not special or anything. What is going on? I've never heard of such a thing. Handy when out shopping. When when you go food shopping. Carrier bags these days are really weak. But very thin. He comes out of Waitrose. Done. <laughs> I can't think of anything where you go, brilliant. I'm a magnet. When do you need to be a magnet? Well, what superpower would you like then? I came up with one. I'd be bullshit, man. There's so many meetings going on where you know people are bullshitting. 
I'd just like to walk in. I wouldn't need a special costume. Just dress like this. And I'd fly in. I'd go, bullshit. You're talking bullshit. And they'd go, oh, it's bullshit, man. And I'd go, yeah, it is bullshit, man. You're talking bullshit. And eventually, people would stop talking shit. That, that could take off. Nice. I quite like... I, mean, I know you said you didn't want a costume, but if I could get a little costume for you, what colour would it be? I don't need a costume. No, but you don't need it, but if I got one for you, what would it no, have? No, I don't need all that, because that's just wasting time. That's all bullshit. How do we know you're bullshit, man? How do we know you're bullshit, man? Because I flew in. Oh, well, you, so you can fly. fly. So your superpower is saying bullshit, but you can <laughs> also fly. Yeah, but, but also, people know if I've said it's bullshit, they know that you were talking bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but, but wait. That's my superpower. Wait, no, 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 no. No, your superpower is surely flying as well. You didn't, yeah. you didn't... We can all say bullshit. No, no, yeah. the flying is necessary because of the amount of bullshit that's going but on. But if you could world. fly... <laughs> but if I can't fly, how am I going to get a wreck? There's loads of bullshit. <laughs> what are you going to do? Keep jumping in a cab? <laughs> wait. I'm going to be busy all day. No, I haven't invented this. It's not my fault you can or can't fly. No. Calm down. I know, but I'm saying if it's my superpower, <laughs> I'd want to fly in. Yes, my point... And I don't want a costume because I'd be constantly waiting wearing that costume because no. of the amount of bullshit that's being said. Yes, I understand that. So you, so your point is this. Everyone can tell bullshit, but you need to fly to get there quick and get it out Just in the open. Can it quick? Yeah. If someone starts spouting bullshit. How can bullshit, you hear them? So you can you're not super, super hearing, hearing as, well. as well. Yeah. So you can... Hold on. So wait a minute, right. Can you see... Can you see where they are? Or can you just... I'm just can, hearing it. So if there was a meeting, right, going on in Leeds now, and there was a bloke going, well, if you invest in this company, if you give me one million, I can guarantee you, you will make an extra million right. by the year. I will double, I will <laughs> double, <laughs> I will double <laughs> your investment in one year. What? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it would work. <laughs> you can see how... Uh, I know, because honestly, that's years and years of people spouting it. Yeah. Meetings, ever since being neck eye. Mm. It's like... That's, that's all you ever hear. OK. But in, how would you programs, in X so Factor, you... honestly, X Factor would keep me busy. OK, it's yeah. Just the amount of shite yeah. that is being told to people in that, and uh, all that crying, that'd be the next one. I don't know what I'd call it. That thing when girls do that now, I don't know where that's come from. When they're getting a tear coming on, they go like that. I want to fly. Fucking stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> we all do. Fucking hell. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. Oh, no, it's, it's not, not, I say, but smell. It's good smell. That's rank. No. It is. No. I found that I've enjoyed food more since I've got back from Japan. Because you appreciate... Just nice food. Yeah, but that's only because you're only saying it's not nice because it's different. That, I mean... No, it wasn't nice in Japan. I was proper struggling. I was losing weight and I was getting moany because I was starving. And there was nothing. I was going around saying, have you just got any toast? And they look at you like, no. And they give you like a squid bollock. <laughs> <laughs> There's just nothing. That's for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like they save the weird shit for, for tea. That's breakfast. They start you off with the weird stuff. And the hard yeah. stuff. And do you know what? Yeah. I didn't tell them, the people who were away with me. But I was struggling that much on two mornings to try and get through it. I was eating strepsils because I found it? that my me, me taste buds went numb and they didn't have a clue what was going on. And I just was shoving stuff in. Have a big bit. Have a little big bit. What the? Have a big bit. Big. Don't start saying you don't understand me now. Oh, I'm going to be sick. There's something in the middle of it that's really grim. I'm going to be sick in your Japanese garden. Pretty good now. I just shoving anything in. I've eaten geckos. I'm not that fussy. I stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. This isn't me being a bit, ooh, mm. it's fucking horrible. Yeah, that was too far. Yeah, that's, that's like the, the start of sushi. That's where it all began with that. Mm. How did it carry on? Why didn't someone say, what is this shit? Pack <laughs> that in, stop serving that, and that should have been the end of sushi. 170 quid. My best friend loves yeah, what sushi. What do you recommend? What, what should they just, get over there? Just have a look at any other country's menu. Nip into any restaurant, get a menu, and go, oh, right, that's what people like eating. Yes, it is, not phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> Just something normal. <laughs> it's bloody massive, isn't she, when she cuts out of the water? Yeah. Oh, my God, it's Lenny's on. I forgot which episode that one was. was my That is mental. That is mad. Your dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. 
Fucking hippo, in eh? <laughs> that was the best of everything. An animal here that normally kills people, right? It's a number one killer, a hippo, right? You have to trek. You have to stay well back. You can't see. You've got to look at hippos through binoculars. Suddenly, there I am in a house where someone's got one as a pet. A hippo in the house. Tea on demand. Biscuits when you want them. Hippo in the front room. <laughs> that is the ideal. <laughs> I always see them in the same surroundings. Because it's, it's in a lake. Cruel. It's not cruel. In this case, it can it go would have free. Been dead. It would have been dead. It was saved. But could I just say that wild animals should never be kept as pets? You can't yeah. suddenly start keeping wild animals in council houses in case you pop round for a biscuit and want to see one. <laughs> I'm just saying that for me, I'll never forget it. It's a surreal moment. Yeah. You, you've seen hippos out in the wild. It's boring. boring. I've, I've seen hippos in a natural habitat. Boring. What, what chair are you sitting in? How well, good where's would the carpet? It be, where's the carpet, you faggot? <laughs> so you're telling me you'd rather queue up at the zoo to see some animal sat like that on a rock looking fed up than walking into a house not knowing what's in there going oh what's in here wandering in oh that nice plasma you've got oh nice sofa there's a gorilla in the corner <laughs> <laughs> honestly taking an animal like that and seeing it in normal surroundings it makes it even weirder it's amazing yeah. i'll never forget it i'll forget a lot of the other things but the hippo in the house was a highlight hippo in the house was brilliant that and the volcano they're the highlights of the whole yeah. thing Okay, now. That was loud. Why was the volcano so amazing? Just because it's madness, it's dangerous. You stood on the edge of it. It makes you realise that the world is alive. Yeah. You don't think about that, do you, when you walk yeah, about I'd, on I'd rather have one in my front room, though. <laughs> I'd, go, I'd go in, I'd go, oh, it's nice plasma. Yeah, new carpet. Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Girl space. Let's have some marshmallows. <laughs> I'm not walking. I've got one here. <laughs> Why is he doing cross eyes? He's got little ears, long arms, short legs. Is this your speech? Isn't that, isn't that a tragedy that some of these species could be gone in a few years? The mountain gorilla that you saw. Now. Yeah, there's only 700 and odd of them so left. So precious. So precious. And yet you didn't really want to trek for it. You'd have rather it came around your house. I wouldn't want them wiped out. We're saying they're the closest thing to human. So what's wrong in having them in your house? That's a very human thing to do. Treat them mm. like a human if they're very close to being human. Come on in. Sit down. All right. Of course I don't agree with them dying. There's people who kill them just for their hands so they can have an ashtray mm. of a gorilla hand. How it doesn't even work. Is that? Well, it doesn't work. That right. doesn't even work as an ashtray. Right. The ash is going to roll through its fingers. It's a bit chavvy as well as a design. Mm. I, my furniture wouldn't work with that. Nothing to do with is it nasty and all that. It's a horrible thing. Yeah. You mean if it was a fake one made of... I'm just saying a hand. Forget it's a gorilla. A human hand. If it was a piece of art, a ceramic... It doesn't work. No, it's the cruelty that I find yes, disgusting. Yes, but it doesn't work. Not the design. It's a yeah. beautiful design, a but gorilla it hand. Work. When it's attached to his fucking arm. But a hand there, <laughs> look, it doesn't work properly, does it? Yes, Why we're not talking about it? whether it works. We're talking well, about how vile and disgusting it is. It is. Yeah. But think about it. If there's anyone out there who is vile and disgusting, it doesn't work as a, as a thing on a table. <laughs> you put your fag on it. <laughs> Go like that, the ash rolls through the fingers. Oh, it's yeah. It doesn't work. That's the message that should be out there. Don't have a gorilla hand, not because it's cruel and that, which it is, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Double pronged message. If his hand yeah. was there, cut its head off, you can put fruit in it. That works. <laughs> it's cruel, but I'm just saying it doesn't work. One of my favourite things. He's got such a unique approach to things and that's one of my favorite things about watching Carl is I don't think my brain would have went there I would have automatically gone to this should not be happening it's it's cruel and inhumane and I don't know if inhumane is the right word but it's wrong and his brain goes to it's not practical because it, it doesn't it won't function correctly and I don't know that myself or many other people would have automatically went there or went there quickly you know what i mean it's cruel but i'm just saying it doesn't work one of my favorite things about this show isn't just getting you to exotic places or out of your comfort zone it's you interacting 
with people. Are, are you okay? Yeah. I love this. Are you gay? No, I've got, I've got a girlfriend, 17 years. Fuck <laughs> boy. Hey? Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Safety's on, that's an AK-47. Yeah, I've heard of them. Crisp, Whoa, look biscuit, at the magazine fruit, on that. wiggly worm. My favourite bit, I just think, when he was, you know, cooking for the king, and then he got caught up in the moment, like it suddenly is kitchen, when they go, they want another pudding. Who does? All of them. I've only got one dinner, custard. Like, suddenly, oh, but he's the king. Not in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm Carl Cookie Pilkinson. Why does he keep doing that uh, with his eyes? Pudding, yeah. chocolate, uh, sponge, custard. Thank you. Quite warm. <sighs> God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Carl? Yeah? I think they want another round of cake. Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. You took it so <laughs> seriously. <laughs> because what's the point in doing anything if you don't? Mm. Yeah. Good point. I mean, there are some great characters in this. One of my favourites is the Russian taxi driver. I'd love to get him over here and you you show him around. No, you wouldn't, though. He... I was stuck in a car with him in busy traffic in Russia. It was a nightmare. Oh, you do not value life too much and got good life insurance. The brakes in this car just fail. It's the worst car I ever bought. It's British and I never thought a car could be made that bad. Right. <laughs> I think we found the Russian equivalent of Carl. It's because I was stuck in a car with this miserable bastard. But he was saying the same thing. He felt you were a miserable bastard. He didn't like you. Russia, though, is quite... It felt like that. It felt like you're not meant to be happy. Maybe he's your bog-standard Russian. Everything's quite hard. Signs, the text on buildings. I've never been a lover of font. I think there's too many fonts. Right. But after being over there, they've got, like, one, and it's in capital. He's yelling at you. <laughs> Even if it's something nice. Kittens for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's... Fucking <laughs> sharp. Now, despite the fact you didn't really get on with Russia, the Trans-Siberian Express journey actually threw up some of your favourite things. You ended up um, at, at the Dwarf Village. Great. Right. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I thought it was really good. I mean, how can you fault that? It was just slick. You know, you had, like, a little Rich and Judy come out at the beginning. They sort of introduced everyone. Different singers. It was, it was like our life, but miniature. It's like a little Britain's Got Talent. There was a little Peter Andre who came out, did a little sing-song. Little woman with glasses on, Lily Allen. It, it was just really familiar. Enjoyed it. And people at home, you'll probably get some going, it's not right. Shouldn't be looking at dwarfs singing and dancing on the stage. But we do it with X Factor. The early stages of that are a load of divs. Everyone knows it. The people come in, aren't pretending they're here just to see singing and dancing. They know they're dwarfs. Everyone's having a good day. What's wrong with it, really? So if I was a dwarf, I'd definitely come here. One hang around at home. There's nothing for you at home. You don't get looked after like this. You don't get given little houses and a stage to perform on and all that. I've always thought being small would be all right. Being a dwarf, I'd rather be a dwarf than like Steve, who's almost a giant, because the world's not made for a giant. Being a dwarf, being on a plane, loads of leg room, king-sized Twix is massive. The world's overpopulated, especially in China, and they're like over a billion people. Perfect. You want to be small here, more room. They need more of them, actually. And then I look at it and I think, is that, is that how we're meant to have evolved? Maybe that is the future. Maybe we're the odd ones out here, when you think about it. Be a dwarf. That's not good advice, be a dwarf. Well, mm -hmm. how, how? Right, fair enough. I'm just saying that it was one of the best times I had, that. And I think more people should go and visit, because that is helping them out. And something they haven't sort of tapped into, but I think they could make money from, is sort of renting themselves out to people who don't know if they want a kid or not. <laughs> because even though they were gr grown men, there's something that makes you want to sort of go like that on their head. Too many people jump into having kids and don't know if they want them or not. Yeah, so yeah. Pets. But would the dwarf have to affect the mannerisms of a child? They, they kind of do. The way they are around you, they're sort of laughing and joking. But that's what a normal person is, and most people are sort of laughing and joking. Right, what's your you. idea, then? What would you get, to, get them to do? Get them to do anything. But they haven't got any work over there. But they can work. Doing what? 
<laughs> in offices. No, they can't, because the tables are too big for them and stuff, aren't they? You've got to start Still accommodating nice. them. And nobody wants to. But we do that with wheelchair access. I'm just saying, you're all a bit like, oh, you can't say that. Well, yes, you can say that, because there's a load of old bollocks. What do you want to say? That we're I'm just saying to... there's nothing wrong with it. If one of them wants to act as a kid, rental, <laughs> he should be allowed to. <laughs> I'm just like saying, a, like if one of them... rental. <laughs> kid, kid, rental. kid rental. With dwarf. Now, of course, we asked viewers of the show to ask any questions that, uh, that they'd like to ask of you, and we could put them to you. And this is from uh -oh. uh, Sarah from St. Louis in Missouri. Um, Hi, Carl. Just wondering, why are you friends with Ricky? You have completely opposite personalities, and he loves to annoy you. What do you get out of this relationship? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I don't think we do have opposite personalities. I think we're very similar. No. No, we're not. But I think that's what I like, the challenge of it. It's like having a dangerous pet. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, it could end up killing you. And that's what you're like with this trip. You've nearly done me in a few times. I can be quite happy and I go, I feel a bit too content. Mm. Call Ricky up. <laughs> Two minutes, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have called him. Sure. Makes you feel alive. <laughs> Bucket list. What do you want to do, Carl? I think it is good to have to drive down Route 66. friends that are all right, then. opposite or different. What are we doing? Balance you out. You at the cuddle party. Couldn't stand it. Uh, no, I, I mean... don't understand why you didn't just have a cuddle with someone. Well, with strangers. Yeah. What difference does it make? I think a hug is there for a reason. What's a hug there for? You hug someone when they're fed up. Mm. Well, I'm fed up now. No, you're not, though. Well, look. You see, you're abusing look, the hug. Look, Carl, gonna get Carl, one. look. Yeah, well, you're not going to get one when you're doing Aww. that. But we're not a bloke anyway. Well, no, I don't you hug. You general. said it wasn't to do with male or female. You said it was to do with being a stranger's. I know you better than anyone apart from Suzanne. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm still not happy with that. How would you feel if I scooted up behind you to spoon you? Would that be okay? Well, that's worse than a cuddle. That is a cuddle. That's more that For the record, he wait he lasted way longer than I would have. The minute they started laying down, I probably would have bounced. No thank you. No thank you. There have been enough times in my life that there has been unwarranted touching and I just mm -mm. Mm -mm. To each their own, I guess. You know, whatever. That's more than a cuddle. Yeah, so what if I put my back to you and I face the other way? Well, that's all right, because that's just because we're all it's crowded. Touching like that, that's just that's just like being on a so tube. So I could do that, but you don't touch people on the tube. You do. In London, you do. It's a nightmare in rush hour. Really? You'd love it. <laughs> it's ridiculous going around cuddling strangers, but mates. Always hug. Do you want to hug me? Yeah. Well, yeah well, only if it's all, all no. of us. I don't want him well, to feel yeah, yeah, No, I'm not left out. You have a hug. You no, know each other hug. longer Stand than you. Up. No, I'm not having a hug. Come on. Get off. Come hug. on, have a hug. No, no this, this, this is... It? Right. Come on, hug. I'm not happy with this. Get him down there, because the front part is right. Come on. Come on. So, hold on. I think you should be on the floor, and we should have a little man wedge. Do you want to get on top of me, Steve? Let's have a little man wedge. Well, I want a piece of car, like. I know, but you can have a little... Love man wedge. Oh, nice. Oh. See? Fucking hell, I think I'm going to the right <laughs> oh, God! Well, if you've got one, I have too, Steve. <laughs> is that Frank again? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it, your program? The program? The program, the name. Idiot Abroad. The board. Idiot Abroad. Idiot. Just... I'll write it down. Uh, idiot Abroad. Uh, ab abroad. Abroad. Idiot Abroad. That's mm. the program. The name of the program? Oh, too big, man. No. <laughs> Idiot. I'm bored. Yeah, don't shout Idiot. about that. Idiot. I'm bored. The yeah, name. Yeah. I know, I didn't want oh. it. It was meant to be Carl Pilkington's 7 Idiot. One. Yeah, I know. I'm bored. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Idiot. Yeah, there's a name. Yeah. Idiot. Mm. Div. Knobhead. Knobhead. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not idiot. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. It's just a friend came up with the title. Yeah, I'm not idiot. No. I don't, you know, I don't know the name. I know, I know. I know, ah. but, but ignore the name. Idiot. I'm bored. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me ask you a, another question from our viewers. Here's one from Gareth Sutcliffe, and he says, 
Carl, French novelist Marcel Proust once wrote, the voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. With that in mind, could you sum up your travel experiences and offer your view of travel in a similarly meaningful quote? <laughs> that would be a tough one to come up with on the spot. Don't piss ass about traveling, getting jet lag, eating food you don't like, shut your eyes and imagine stuff. Well, wow. beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I've had the shits. <coughs> this is good. It cools you down. That's going to give you a headache. Not get rid of one. Complicated it is just for a toilet. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the skill of Bill Gates. He's done a shit. He can't do any of that. Can't do that stuff. But it's a robot. <laughs> it's a crisp picker upper. If you want some crisp, but you don't want to get crisps on your hands, you use a crisp picker upper. I like the fact that, that you've got a bit of a rebellious streak in you sometimes. You go off-road. And I, I called you when you were in Japan, and you dropped this bombshell that you've finally decided the one thing you want to do before you die. And that was to invent something. Yeah. And you said it's because you wanted to leave a legacy, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. Well, just because you, you're dead longer than you're alive, aren't you? OK. I'm coming up with stuff all the time. That's why I think this is my strength that hasn't been used yet. I can't do this sort of thing, really, this sort of job of being on the telly. Look at Dyson. It's only a vacuum cleaner, yet he's up there with Einstein and everything. He's well-rated, just for a vac. And I reckon I can come up with something better than that. How fun. It doesn't have to be a cure for cancer. I'm not going to come up with that. All I can do is come up with something that I needed at the time and that I think other people will go, do you know what, that's a bloody good invention. So something that yeah. benefits mankind? Yes. OK. He, he, he pitched me the idea over the phone and I said, I'm out. OK, well, pitch it to me now, then. <laughs> right. In Japan, they don't have these... You mean they don't have... Chairs. chairs. They don't have chairs? No, of course they have chairs. You try finding one. You sit on the floor all the time. When you go in a restaurant, you sit down cross-legged. get a flat arse and your legs ache. Yep. Right? So you've invented what? It's the Pilco pump pant. I'm sorry, the Pilco pump pant? It's a pair of pants with a cushion built in the arse. <laughs> The inflatable pant stops your ass from getting wet. For men or women. Do you know the thing you put on your neck when you're on long flights? Yeah. I've used that. That isn't how the finished thing would look when I, when I make it. You know, this is a prototype. Pilco pant. Excellent. I sold some. On a shopping channel, you're slagging them off, you're saying, I'm really? out. Watch this. But this is the lovely man I was talking about. It is our lovely Carl to bring you some trousers. All right, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> you made Good them. One. Morning, everyone. Hope you're well. It's the pants we're selling today. Look at that. Not bad, that, is it? You've come on the telly to flog me a pair of pants. We know about pants, we've seen pants before. You haven't, now, have you? You haven't seen these pants. It's that bit there, that's the cellar. That's what we're here for, that's what we're talking about. It's the Pilco pump pant. The way it works is you've got a big zip, a good quality zip. Look at that. It doesn't stick, it's a quality zip. It doesn't stick, it's a quality zip. All right? Open it. There it is. There's the cushion. You might have one of these already. Shove it in there. You know you're going to be sat down for a while, you're waiting for that like order of the sofa. With you're air. waiting at the bus stop, you haven't got a seat because the queue's big, the buses are delayed. Where are you going to sit? But well, the beauty is, you can sit where you want. Sit on concrete, sit on the road, not on the road, that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the pavement, <laughs> sit on the grass, how good is that? And there's only 15 pairs available. 15 pairs in the whole world. Do you want to be one of the 15? Still 15 left. To have the Pilco pump pan. Look at him, um, look at him in them. There you go. It's, it's, it's terrible. 
show you how easy it is again. It looks like some sort of medical yeah. procedure, doesn't it? That's what people would think if they saw you walking They think Everybody that you'd, you'd think you've had your ass removed. Get rid of that. <laughs> Look at that for a pocket. <laughs> Look at that. Like I say, we're carrying more and more stuff around. Think with of them. carrying stuff in that. The, your arse. Yeah. Rattling around with stuff. Yeah. Mobile phones, oh, football. Laptops, iPads, all that lot. Fruit. Look at, that. Look at the size of that. Who's pocket. putting a laptop Milk. in their, in their arse? Bread. <laughs> Milk, bread. Milk, loaf, bread. You don't know, buy a carrier bag. They're charging you five pence a bag at the moment at the supermarket. Yeah. No, I'm not buying a bag. You just turn round at the cash point, stick your milk in there, stick your bread in there, off you go. A big, big pocket. You've got this. Health and safety these days. You've got that in there. You like a walk. Maybe buy some for your young kid. You're walking by the canal. He falls in. Is he a good swimmer? I don't know. You tell me. But if he falls in, he's got something to keep him buoyant. Upside down, down like that. He's, he's, he's like, like that. He's drowning. Like, 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 like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he might be a Help him out if he fall in a canal, a lake, a river. Um, anything else? Anything else goes? Hang on, let's see how the orders are going. Have we had anyone calling in yet? Two people on the phone. What do they want? Do they want to talk to me or is that just... They've gone. We've sold them. Job done. Brilliant. Cheers for that, everyone. These are how they look in real life. This is the Pilky Pump Pant. Pilko Pump Pant. Yep. I just want to say, when he named them Pilko Pump Pant or whatever, in my head, I mean, I'm glad that they're like a cargo pants. That's cool. But I thought that idea could actually work. But the when he calls it a pump pant, I thought that the pants were just going to look normal from the outside, for the most part, you know and have something that you could squeeze maybe to like actually inflate it like there would be some kind of inflatable cushion in the buttocks area and you pump it up and that make it fluffy and cushioned so you can sit down somewhere but when you don't want it then just tip something and you know the air come out and then they be normal again I didn't realize there was going to be a cushion that you put in there because then your butt is always puffed out. No, I thought it was going to be a pump. Anyway, sorry. Okay. I mean, it looks ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. So does most fashion these days. Okay, no, good. Yeah, no, yeah. If it was, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, it's all up. Sit arbitrary. down. Yeah. Sit, well, why sit? Well, here's the chair. You don't need a chair. That's doubled up. You must be too comfortable. Sit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the floor there because that would be. And I suppose nice. particularly useful if you've added a finger up the arse. Right, there you go. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Dead comfy. Yeah. Really comfy. Um, Carl, can you go and bring me my sort of bread and milk and stuff that I... Have you got five pence for a carry bag? I, I, I haven't, no. Well, I haven't. Hang on, don't worry about that. See you in a minute. What did you want? Bread and milk. Some groceries, yeah. Look, imagine walking down the street wearing that. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it looks, <laughs> it looks <laughs> fucking ridiculous. He doesn't know. It he does. Doesn't it looks like that. You, no, no one, no one will walk down the street like that. Hang on. Hold on, Carl. I bought you. Um. No, look, look, Carl. Carl. There's no restrictions. I've bought you a couple of cu uh, cups and saucers. Yeah. Can you take? I bought you these for you. you got a bag. I haven't got a bag. No, just pop them right, in there. Pop them in. You, you, yeah. You see. You, yeah, just... Oh, well, can you... Shove them in. Yeah, just put them in there. There you go. Be, yeah. Do you want to say? Just say for that, yeah. <laughs> all right, OK, all right, yeah. Go. Run for the bus, oh. mate. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Suzanne's at home. Oh, <laughs> here comes Carl. Here comes Carl. <laughs> With our new crockery. <laughs> Honestly, that isn't pulling me down or anything. That is fine. That is... How are the pants not... Pulling down. Maybe he has a really good belt on. It's absolutely ridiculous. No, well, you'd bubble wrap them normally, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, God! Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just want to say, Carl, I was impressed all the way around with the stuff you've done. I like the fact you didn't do stuff you didn't want to do. I thought it showed um, real drama and resolve. You weren't just a puppet. You weren't just an idiot, an adrenaline junkie. You were 
doing things that matter to you. Um, is there anything, though, you didn't do that you wish you had? If you could do it again, would you go, do you know what, I will do that now, I will bungee jump, or I will... Is there anything you wish you'd have done that you didn't? In Japan, I wanted to do karaoke. What would you sing? Do a bit of, um, Charles and Dave. Just a montage, like he's singing. He's singing. There ain't no pleasing you. I can't even be angry with you because you are so useless. You only had to say the word bullshit. over i want to let the credits roll because i know a lot of people put a lot of time into creating this show i don't want to be disrespectful and turn it off while the credits are rolling so there is a season three i wonder what he does in season three because this one was kind of uh presented as like a bucket list um i wonder what season three will be and what he will do in season three that was entertaining i think it's cool that he actually did create 15 pairs well 16 because he was wearing one and selling 15. so i think it's cool that he actually went and created some of those pants and i'm glad they talked about some of the things that he did so my question is when he goes abroad does he do all of the episodes first and then return home after after it's all done. When I first started watching it, for some reason in my head I thought he would go to the place and then come back and talk to them after each one. So I think it's cool that they talk about different things he's experienced, what are his favorite things, what they enjoyed, and also show clips to remind us of those specific experiences because it's I watch Ricky and Carl and Steve once a week so it has taken me eight weeks to watch season two well longer because I was flip-flopping it with the Ricky Gervais show and next week I'll watch some of Ricky Gervais show anyway I enjoyed it so thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you next time have a good one